Let's take a more in-depth look at the clefs. So we have our treble clef. Boom. This could still be bass. Bass clef we have right there. And then we know that the treble G clef right here, this is the range. Bass clef. F is your home spot, so that's F clef as well. It's another name for it. But if we go down a bit, I'd like to get you to know uh, the next one up would be a tenor clef. Now, this starts the beginning of what are called the movable C's, the movable C clefs. These are clefs in which there are two what looks like C's in like a formation, a circular formation, and the spot between the two C's is where middle C would be. Clever enough. So whenever you have this, wherever that, that in-between spot is, is where middle C would be. So what you would do is use that as your guiding uh, note for the range that you would play in. And you would actually be going, okay, well, this is C. Uh, that means we have all of this. And before I start going too much into ledger lines, we have all of these notes up here, but what about below? Well, we have the middle C again, right? And then we have below it B, A, G, F, E, D, C. Now, some really trippy stuff is this. If you compare this to the treble clef, it is basically, basically an octave plus one note higher on the staff, the notation, than it would be on the treble clef. Treble clef has it down here, octave lower. The, Tenor clef has it an octave higher because the middle C is moved up an octave. In treble clef, this would be the middle C, but in this movable C tenor clef, this is middle C. So it goes up not only an octave, but a second on top of the octave. So each of these are an octave plus a second away from the treble clef notes. So, all right. So for this, you probably would need these note names and then we're going to discuss the other clef let's see inspector and I might just I'm just going to do all the C clefs in one <clears throat> video this time and the next C clef that we have going right to left instead of left to right um, would be alto clef. So this is commonly known as the viola clef too. Now you have this. You have one, two, three lines up as middle C. So right there. So what would you do? You'd put the middle C right on the center line there in the middle of the staff because that's where the break in the C's are. So there you go. That's middle C. So what does that what does that mean? That means that you have this range going up to C, which this is F, G, A, B, C, right? And then you have, going up from that note, middle C, you have, this is the D, 
the E, the F, and the G. Okay, and then off the staff you have the first A. Um, that's the higher A. So this is the uh, alto or viola clef that's normally in string music now. You'll see it on most of um, mo most of uh, concert orchestra music now. For example, here we go. Here's all the here are all the clefts. And see right there we have violins or treble clef, and then we have violas have that movable C right there. Okay. So that is what we do. And that's how we do this. So again, if we were going to name the names of these notes, we would do it this way. We go up the notes. We go um, F, G, A, B, C, on up to middle C, then the middle C, D, E, F, G, and then A is just over the top. All right. So then after that one, we have this clef, the mezzo soprano. And so, so we notice that the, the movable C clefs are getting lower and lower each one. So we have middle C on the second line now. And you notice there's less of a lower range each time we lower the clef. And there's more of an upper range each time we lower the clef. So that what would that mean? That would mean let's say this is A. Since this is our middle C, we have to keep that in mind. So A B C D E, F, G, A, B. Pretty weird, huh? So this is how this works. We would put those in. There you go. There it all is. And I'll put this in the resources section so you guys have it. Okay? And I'll put this, you know, if you're in the class, I'll put go ahead and put this in the chat. Okay? So, yes. This is the mezzo soprano, then the last one, but not the least. Actually, it's not the last one. It's the second to last one cuz I forgot. There's one on the third line. There's one on the actually the top line of the staff. But this one is the soprano cliff here. So now we notice that this is the middle C, this line right here. <clears throat> and then that means we would actually have C starting there. D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Okay, so we would do that. And that would be shown like this.
Okay, there you go. And we forgot the cleft before the base cleft, which is now we're on it, baritone cleft. So now you see the middle C, the break between the two C's there is the topmost line. That means <clears throat> much of the range of whatever this is playing in, usually old style trombones play in this sort of thing, there is a much lower range given in the notes here and less of a higher range. That's what this stands for. And, and actually, the farther up you go in clef, uh, the lower the range is. Okay, so this would be it. So middle C would be the top line, D, E, F, G. Just by example, what if we add middle C again? If we go down, C, B, A, G, F, O, O, F, E, D, and C would be there. So there's a bunch more notes that are lower in range than other clefs. So these are all the clefs and the ranges that they represent, at least a rough idea. So hopefully you guys um, got, a, got a lot out of that and uh, we'll go on to the next subject.